He's known for his blunt talk, and now Howard Dean is stirring up a lot of buzz in cyberspace for his comments about Republicans. Let's check in with CNN political producer Abby Tatton and Jackie Schechner, our blog reporter. Jackie. Hi, Dana. Yeah, Howard Dean's comments continue to give the blogs plenty of fodder today. And uh, over at QAnon.net, a neo-libertarian blog, they sum it up very nicely, saying Dean continues to ignore the law of holes, which says when you're in one, quit digging. They've also got a roundup of what people are saying and that more Dems distance themselves from Dean, that being their title. They're referring to the Democratic leadership. But if you go out into the blogs and you read a lot of the liberal bloggers, a lot of them are coming down in support of Dean, saying they like the way that he speaks, his blunt manner, the fact that he's so straightforward. One example we found was winifred.blogspot.com. This is a female professor in the southeastern United States. And she says, you go, Howard, goes on to say, is it seriously in dispute that the Republican party agenda promotes whites over minorities, Christianity and Christian morals, and heterosexuality and rich people. And is it a white Christian party? That's what some of the bloggers are trying to prove or disprove today, both on the left and the right. Here's MyDD.com, a very popular progressive site, where Jerome answers the question by just posting a simple photo here. He's got the quote from Howard Dean, a pretty monolithic party. They all behave the same. They all look the same. There is Bush with some prominent Republican lawmakers there looking fairly homogenous as a group. There. At redstate.org, they've got something different. This is over to the right now, where they have the audio, the whole clip. You can listen to what Dean was saying. They're picking up on it, something else that he said, not just the white Christian party bit. I'm trying to think of an Asian American who has had success as a Republican. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my head. That's later in the comments from Howard Dean. Hmm, says Red State. Paid any attention to the cabinet lately, Dr. Dean? I'd suggest the Department of Labor. Click over there. Obviously, there are referring there to Secretary of Labor Elaine Chow and lots of the Republican bloggers, bloggers on the right, pointing to the diversity in the cabinet of President Bush. Another story that is picking up some traction today is that the Justice Department wrapped up a racketeering suit against Big Tobacco, and in closing arguments last night, the lawyer asked for an interesting amount of money. Instead of the $130 billion they were expected to ask for, they asked for 10. This not lost on David Sirota over at davidsirota.com. He is a fellow at the Center for American Progress. He calls it the Great Tobacco Capitulation, goes on to say that this is the, one of the most egregious examples of pay to play, pointing out that the Republicans have gotten a lot of money over the years from big tobacco. Over here at Suburban Guerrilla, this is SusieMadrak.com. She posts part of the article, actually a quote from a lawyer from the Philip Morris Group. We were very surprised. Uh, it's clear the government hasn't thought through what it's doing, says the lawyer. What she says is, gee, I had a completely different reaction. I think they know exactly what they're doing. They're protecting yet another massive corporation. So that story resonating with the progressive bloggers today. Now, there's a picture that we're seeing more and more on the blogs as the days goes on, sometimes a picture paints a thousand words. Here it is. This is Gregory Dupre, who on April 25th of this year crossed over into the United States and was allowed in over the border even though he had a whole slew of weapons with him. He had a knife and a hatchet and a, a bloody chainsaw, a small chainsaw we hear, <laughs> but still border officials saying that there was no reason to detain him. This is uh, crooksandliars.com, a, a liberal blogger, but it doesn't really matter on the left and right. Lots of people are talking about how this happened. Over at michellemalkin.com um, she actually follows the immigration issue uh, pretty closely. She's also part of the immigration blog. It's a group blog that handles issues with border patrol and border crossings. But she points out that the Department of Homeland Security didn't do anything wrong in this case. The border agents seemed to act properly, that they did, uh, there were no warrants out at the time that he crossed the border, and that they did detain him for a, uh, a couple of hours, which is what they were expected to do if they had any questions. A lot of people agreeing with her on that point, diggersrealm.com, being one of them, saying that, yes, procedurally, it looks like the border agents did what they were supposed to do, but maybe, they say, the Border Patrol's procedure should be revised to allow, it looks like my battery is low, look at that, to allow the denial of entry to individuals based solely on the fact that something just doesn't look right. So, Dana, lots of stuff going on there today. We're going to have a second block coming up, and we're going to talk about the Downing Street memo and how it's got some traction, thanks to the blogs. Thank you very both. Go plug that laptop in. <laughs>